Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be explaining about the topic Mysore, a model state. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notification whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. So as I have told, in today's video, we are going to see about the topic Mysore, a model state. So we are going to see about the personalities who helped in making Mysore a model state. So the administration of Mysore was brought under the direct rule of British in 1831. So in 1831 the Mysore administration was brought under, so administration of Mysore was brought under direct rule of British, direct rule of British. So this happened in the year 1831 and it was kept as an independent administrative unit. So regarding administration, Mysore was kept by the British as an independent, independent administrative unit, administrative unit. And for the administration of Mysore, the British government appointed commissioners. So commissioners were appointed for the proper administration of Mysore. And the direct rule of the commissioners that is happened from 1831 to 1881 from the year in which the direct British rule was started from that year till 1881 it was commissioners direct rule. It was Mysore was under the direct rule of commissioners and this direct rule laid the foundation for making Mysore to become a model state. So this was the first uh, introduction part. So the administration of Mysore first was brought under the direct rule of British in 1831 and Mysore was kept as an independent administrative unit and commissioners were appointed for the administration. The direct rule of the commissioners from 1831 to 1881 laid the foundation of Mysore to become a model state. So that was uh, how Mysore became a model state under the rule of commissioners. Now seven commissioners from the time period of uh, 1831 to 1881 there were seven commissioners, seven different commissioners ruled Mysore during this period and among the seven commissioners the most important of them were Mark Coburn was the first important commissioner and another person was Lewis Bentham Bowring. Lewis Bentham Bowring. So these two were the two important commissioners among the seven commissioners who uh, ruled from 1831 to 1881. So now we are going to learn in detail about these two commissioners. So first we will see about Mark Cubburn. Mark Cubburn, he, uh, his time period was from 1834 to 1861. So let us see what all things did Mark Cubburn do to make Mysore a model state. So he brought, first thing is he brought many administrative reforms. Many administrative reforms were brought in the state by Mark Cubburn. He brought many administrative reforms. The main thing, the most important uh, thing was he shifted the capital from Mysore to Bangalore, from Mysore to Bangalore. So Mark Cubburn was a person who shifted the capital from Mysore to Bangalore. So that was the second thing done by Mark Cubburn. After that 
he divided the Mysore state into administrative units. So Mysore state was divided and it was divided into administrative units. Administrative units. Mark Kaban divided Mysore state into administrative units and these administrative units were looked after by superintendents. Superintendents looked after this administrative unit. And these units, administrative units were divided into districts and taluks. So units were divided into districts and taluks. That also was done by Mark Kaban. And during his time, judiciary and police department were well organized. Judiciary as well as police department. Police department both were well organized during the time of Mark Kaban. Well organized. So he did many administrative reform and the first one was he shifted the capital from Mysore to Bangalore. Mysore state was divided into administrative unit and these administrative units were looked after by superintendents. The uh, units were further divided into districts and taluks and during his time judiciary and police department were well organized. So he was doing a lot of things to for the development of Mysore state. The next thing was Kannada was introduced as the official language. Mark Kaban introduced Kannada as the official language. As the official language. And he was also interested in the construction of new roads uh, and these new roads specially they connected important towns in the state. They connected important towns in the state. Many new roads were uh, constructed during his time and these roads connected important towns in the state. And these uh, towns and many uh, towns were directly connected to Bangalore also. Other than new roads, bridges also were constructed. Bridges were constructed, then telegraphic lines were laid. Telegraphic lines were laid during the time of Mark Kaban. The most important thing was a railway line was laid during this time from uh, a railway line between Bangalore and Jolarpet. Jolarpet. This railway line was laid in 1859. So a railway line uh, was laid between Bangalore and Jolarpet and this was the first railway line in Mysore state. First railway line in Mysore state from Bangalore to Jolarpet in 1859. And during his time, tax collection was systematized. Tax collection, that is systematically taxes were collected. It was systematized and this helped in increasing the annual income of the state. And he also was interested in developing the coffee plantations. Mark Kaban uh, developed uh, the coffee plantations. Coffee plantations were developed and finally he resigned from his post as a commissioner in the year 1861. So after doing all these developmental activities he resigned from the post in 1861. So uh, Mark Kaban uh, made Kannada the official language. New roads were constructed and all important towns in the state were directly connected to the Bangalore, connected to Bangalore and bridges were constructed and telegraphic lines were laid. A railway line between Bangalore and Jolarpet was laid in 1859 which was the first railway line in Mysore state. Tax collection was systematized and that helped in increasing the annual income. The coffee plantations were also developed and he resigned from his post as a commissioner in 1861. So this was the developmental activities done by Mark Kaban. So let us just go through the points. 
Mysore a model state? The administration of Mysore was brought under the direct rule of the British in 1831. It was kept as an independent administrative unit and commissioners were appointed to look after the administration. The direct rule of the commissioners from 1831 to 1881 laid the foundation of Mysore to become a model state. Seven commissioners ruled Mysore during this period. The most prominent among them were Mark Cubburn and Louis Bentham Bowring. Mark Cubburn He brought about many administrative reforms in the state. He shifted the capital from Mysore to Bangalore. Mysore state was divided into administrative units which were looked after by superintendents. The units were divided into districts and taluks. Judiciary and police department were well organized. Kannada was introduced as the official language. New roads were constructed and all important towns in the state were directly connected to Bangalore. Bridges were constructed and telegraphic lines were laid. A railway line between Bangalore and Jolarpet was laid in 1859. This was the first railway line in Mysore state. Tax collection was systematized which helped in increasing the annual income of the state. The coffee plantations were also developed. He resigned from the post of commissioner in 1861. So this was about Mark Cubburn. Now let us see about the next important commissioner. The next important commissioner's name is Louis Bentham Bowring. Louis Bentham Bowring. His time period is 1862 to 1870. Louis Bentham Bowring. Now let us see what all activities he did. He took charge in 1862 as a chief commissioner of Mysore. So, Louis Bentham Bowring was the chief commissioner, chief commissioner of Mysore. So, he took charge as the chief commissioner of Mysore and he reorganized the entire administration of Mysore state. Reorganized the entire administration of Mysore state. And he divided the administrative units like Nandi Durg, Nandi Durg, Nagara and Ashtagrama. Ashtagrama. These three became the administrative units. Administrative units. So uh, Louis Bentham Bowring he reorganized the entire administration and made Nandi Durg, Nagara and Ashtagrama as administrative units. And to look after these uh, units, uh, to look after each unit, he appointed commissioners. So he appointed commissioners to look after each unit. He reorganized or uh, reformed land revenue. Land revenue system was reformed and judicial and police system, police department were systematically organized. Judicial system and police department, police department both were systematically organized. Organized. So, Louis Bentham Bowring, he became the or he took charge as the chief commissioner of Mysore. After that, he reorganized the entire administration of Mysore state and Nandi Durg, Nagara and Ashtagrama uh, became the administrative units and he appointed commissioners to look after these units. Land revenue was reformed and judicial and police department were systematically organized by Louis Bentham Bowery. After that, he introduced some educational reforms. After the administrative reform, he introduced some educational reforms. So, uh, uh, Department of Public Instruction, this department was headed by a director. So, there was a director for the Department of Public Instruction. And uh, Louis Bentham Bowring, he resigned in 1870. He resigned in 1870. So, these commissioners laid the foundation for the Department of Mysore State. And the state, Mysore state, after the rule of these commissioners, Mysore state was 
uh, it was renditioned renditioned to Chamraja Vodayar 10 Chamraja Vodayar 10 in 1881 so till 1881 commissioners were ruling and after that Mysore state was renditioned to Chamraja Vodayar 10 in 1881 and Chamraja Vodayar 10 ruled till 1894. So, from 1881 to 1894, it was ruled by Chamraja Vodayar 10. After Chamraja Vodayar 10, Krishna Raja Vodayar 4 came to power. Krishna Raja Vodayar 4. So, Chamraja Vodayar 10 was succeeded by Krishna Raja Vodayar 4. And during the rule of these two kings, are uh, Chamraja Vodayar 10 and Krishnaja Vodayar 4, during the rule of these two kings, the Mysore state was served by great divans. There were many great divans who served Mysore state during the rule of these two kings. So, uh, when you see about Louis Bentham Bowring, educational reforms were introduced with the Department of Public Instruction and this Department of Public Instruction was headed by a director. Bowring resigned in 1870 and uh, the state was renditioned to Chamraja Vodaya 10 in 1881 who ruled till 1894. After that he was succeeded by Krishna Raja Vodayar 4 and during the rule of these two kings Mysore state was served by great divans. So two of the great divans who ruled Mysore, who served Mysore state during the rule of these two kings were one divan was Sir M. Vishweshwaraya and another divan was Sir Mirza Ismail. Mirza Ismail. So these two divans were those who served uh, the Mysore state during the rule of the two kings and these divans also like the two commissioners which we learned these two divans also played an important role in earning making the my, making the state of Mysore a model state. So we can say that the divans as well as commissioners played an important role in making Mysore a model state. So now just let us uh, revise through the points which we have studied. Louis Bentham Bowring, he took charge in 1862 as a chief commissioner of Mysore. He reorganized the entire administration of Mysore state. Nandi, Durg, Nagara, Ashtagrama became the administrative units. Commissioners were appointed to look after these units. Land revenue was reformed and judicial and police department were systematically organized. Educational reforms were introduced with the Department of Public Instruction. It was headed by a director. Bowring was signed in 1870. The commissioners laid the foundation for the Department of Mysore State. The state was renditioned to Chamraja Vodayar 10 in 1881, who ruled till 1894. He was succeeded by Krishnaraja Vodayar 4. During the rule of these two kings, Mysore was served by great divans. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya and Sir Mirza Ismail were the prominent among them. They played an important role in earning the title Mysore, uh, title model state to Mysore. Now let us see some important questions. Who transferred the capital from Mysore to Bangalore? Mark Kabban. Name the first railway line laid in Mysore state. Bangalore Jolar Pet Railway Line in 1859. Name two important commissioners of Mysore. Mark Kabban and Louis Bentham Bowring. Write any two administrative reforms of Mark Kabban. He shifted the capital from Mysore to Bangalore. Judiciary and police departments were well organized. He divided the Mysore state into administrative units which were to be looked after by superintendent. Write any two administrative reforms of powering. He reorganized the entire administration of Mysore state. Commissioners were appointed to look after the administrative units. Judicial and police department were systematically organized. Name any two important divans of Mysore. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya and Sir Mirza Ismail. So I hope you have understood the points explained in today's video very clearly. If you have any doubts, you can please ask in the comment section. 
please do like share and subscribe to my channel as still half of the people seeing my channel have not subscribed so i request you to please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends your likes and comments will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos so i hope to see you all soon in the next video thank you for watching